We're here at the K-State Beef Stock Unit to talk about a problem that has plagued most producers every single year. And most of us have lost that battle once or twice. We're talking about flies and how to control them. The first thing about flies is knowing that there's actually multiple kinds of flies. We often group them in one, but knowing which kind of flies you have a problem with will determine how you can control them. When we talk about fly problems, we're really talking about four different kinds of flies, house flies, horn flies, stable flies, and face flies. And thankfully for us, each fly has a preference for where it likes to be on the animal or not on the animal. So just determining which kind of fly you have is the first step in solving your fly problems. Horn flies are always found on the back or the belly of the animal. And often you'll see your animals pushing their heads back, disturbing the flies. The flies puff up in a cloud and then settle right back down. These flies are both males and females are obligate blood feeders and they take small blood meals throughout the day up to 20 to 30 times. These flies only breed in fresh manure so they're generally a problem in pastured cattle or cattle who live near pastured cattle. In this example here we have some horn flies on these cattle here and this is because they're living adjacent to a pasture that has uh, cattle on grass. Our second type of fly that is a blood feeding fly is the stable fly. And these flies you'll often find on the front legs. You'll notice you have a lot of stable fly problems when the animals are stomping a lot. These flies have a really, really painful bite as they insert their mouth parts into the skin to get their blood meal. So if you're noticing a lot of flies on the legs and a lot of stomping, you've got stable flies. Stable flies like to breed in any decomposing plant material, and this can even just be grass clippings. So a great management tip for um, stable flies is keeping your environment clean. House flies are the flies that we generally see around the feed bunker. They are rarely on the animals. What they're doing is they're looking for these really high sugar food sources and house flies will breed anywhere. In a little bit we'll show you some great areas for house flies to breed. House flies are one of the most difficult flies to control. Your real, real first go-to option is going to be making sure that you have set good sanitation and we have some tips for you coming up on that. Face flies, like our horn flies, are mostly seen out in the pasture and this is because both horn flies and face flies have to breed in fresh manure paddies and these you'll often find around the face of the animal as the name suggests. Getting hold of your fly problem the simplest thing you can do is stop adult females from laying eggs. Each fly can lay 100 eggs every couple of days. So over her lifetime, she may lay 500 eggs. So getting rid of adults is important, but getting rid of the places where they breed is more important. By knowing which fly pest you have, you can look for areas where these flies may be breeding. For our horn flies and our face flies, these flies are going to be in pastured environments and undisturbed manure paddies. There's two great things that you can do to get rid of this. One is burning in the spring before the adults that have overwintered it's as pupa, they all get burnt off. This can really reduce your initial fly population. The second thing is having really good robust dung beetle populations because what those dung beetles do is they remove that manure away from the breeding flies and they take it away so that the larva of the flies can't survive. They also reduce your incidences of gastrointestinal nematodes, so make sure your dung beetle populations are thriving. For our flies that we see in confined systems such as face flies and stable flies, sanitation really is key and we're going to do a little bit of digging, something that you can do on your properties and show you where to look and what to look for. The best thing you can do to get off to a good start for fly control is identify your breeding habitat. Go through your facility with a shovel and start digging around and look for these things and these are where your problems are going to start. So if you just dig around, flies need to have, fly larvae need to have moisture to survive. So a dry area like this is unlikely going to be a source of a good breeding habitat for flies. However, along the edges of pens that don't get as much foot traffic, and still have a nice moist surface. This is where you want to start digging around with your shovel and looking for fly larva and fly manure, uh, fly pupa. So as you pick these up, take a look at them and you're going to start to see things that show you that flies have been here and flies will be here. For example, in this little section here, what we have 
is we have an indication of fly eggs over here and we'll give you a close-up of this fly eggs that's what they look like small creamy white oval things we have a fly pupa so this is what it is getting ready to emerge as an adult if you see these you know that you're going to have adults in a few days and we also have some fly larvae in this little patch over here the fly larvae are light phobic which means once you pull it out and they get exposed to the light they'll try and tunnel away and get back into the substrate to get away from the light if you find these things this is what you need to get rid of these are going to be your next generation of adults and as you can see this is just a few seconds that i was digging here and we already have quite a few this needs to be removed from the animals and spread out so that it can dry out the best thing you can do is dry out manure other than larval breeding habitats keep a note of good places where adults like to hide stable flies will feed on the animal and then leave the animal and rest in vegetation and on uh, structures such as fences if you see that your animals have three flies every time you go out there those are not the same three flies each time that is going to be a different fly so often we underestimate the number of stable flies we have anywhere where you have vegetation like this next to your animals that's a great place for the stable flies to exit and then come in when they need to take a blood meal so keeping your grass short keeping bushes away from the animals that's a good source and also just do walkthroughs and just look at your fence lines see if you have any stable flies here they look like house flies but they have a little needle pointing out of their mouth and we have a picture to show you so you know what to look for you can spray these and this will act as a uh, residual spray which can kill the house fly, uh, the stable flies and any house flies who happen to also land on the fencing equipment any integrated pest management program is going to have some component of chemical control what we try and do is make sure that the basis of our integrated pest management program is sanitation physical barriers for example for our horn flies having walk through traps rotational grazing those are all things that we can do that removes flies from the population, removes breeding habitat without having to use chemicals. However, you are more than likely going to have to use chemical control at some point. So what to do and how to choose your best product. When you are talking about chemical control, you want to have a three year rotation. Year one, use only pyrethroid based products. Year two, use only organophosphate based products. Year three, use only macrocyclic lactone based products. Then in year four, you loop back around and start using pyrethroid based products. Where you find this information is on the ingredients list. That will tell you what the active ingredient is. Sometimes these names are really, really long and confusing. Stick them into Google. We also have a wonderful veterinary entomology website that can help you determine which pesticides to use and we have a link to the website in this video so for horn flies ear tags are a great option this is because the uh, active ingredient moves from the ear tags onto the backs of the animals as they move their heads important to remember even though the label says you can use for four to five months research shows that they're actually only active for about 90 to 100 days after 90 days pull out those ear tags if you need to re-tag put a new set back in but don't leave them on for longer than that 100 days things like back rubbers are great self-application options it means that the animals can self-treat however remember that whichever compound you're using for that year if you're using pyrethroid ear tags you have to use a pyrethroid back rubber if you start mixing chemical groups you're going to start selecting for resistance uh, face flies ear tags work great for face flies because the um, the chemical rubs off the ear tag onto the face. Another great option is to have feeders with flaps on them that are impregnated with insecticides and the animals have to lift the flaps open with their head and they get the chemical on their face. So if both face flies and um, horn flies can be controlled in that way. Stable flies are a little bit more tricky because they like to feed on the legs of the animals. So a poron, for example, which would walk, work for a horn fly, does not work for a stable fly because you have to make sure that the chemical is where the fly is going to be feeding so you can use a spray for this make sure you're getting the legs of the animal not just the body of the animal house flies are really really tricky to control we can't control them on animal because they generally don't spend too much time on the animal 
But what we can do is make sure that if we have any places where flies like to sit, for example, the outside of bunkers, you can treat those with chemicals with residual properties. And so those are some good options for chemical control. Remember, correct application and follow the label instructions to the T.